Darling, it's the shy life podcast. You won't find a cast of characters like this everywhere. Hello, Paul. Delicious. This particular episode of the shy life is, is a little more abstract. Okay, it looks like the hairy guy is ready to record. Three, two, one. Go shy yeti. Oh, I hope he hasn't found out my secret. I think he has. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. Um, here with uh, my two special guests today. Um, one of them has a tail, and the other one is Martin. And yes, uh, Martin I'm, Holmes. I'm getting, uh, I should definitely not get top billing here. Let's introduce <laughs> Dealey first. <laughs> yeah, Dealey is here. He is not star, going to speak in a. Star. <laughs> he's not going to say anything unless he um, remembers the song. I'm sure you know some. He does like music, and he really do, does seem to more than you know. If you play music, he does sit there and. And uh, yeah, so yes, um, Martin, we're going to be talking about uh, the next year in the 70s. We're up to 1971. 1971. So. Oh, now let and, me think. Um, yes, I was seven. Mm, well, I would well, I, um, I think I was seven halfway through it. I was minus two, oh. but uh, we will come. We'll. we'll <laughs> we'll run the theme music when we come back you can see if you can remember anything from 1971 but let's run that theme music Bill. press that thing theme button it's time for my old buddy old pal from across the channel across the pond Bob Chandler the shy daddy he's not that shy oh it's the shy life podcast yeah all I wanted was a pie and then I hatched out of an egg Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. It's the quiet ones you've got to watch, you know. Is it metaphorical? Is it is it deep? Is it deep? But that boy, he's got all that shy is right. <laughs> Blimey, Governor, it's the Shy Life Podcast. If you thought that was bad, just listen to this. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to begin. It's the Shy Life Podcast. He's positively glowing. <laughs> And we're back. So, Martin, yes. Is Hello. there anything you can prize from your memory prize about 1971? Memory. Now, I, or is it too I, similar to... I, I don't know. Is 1971 specifically the year of proper decimalization? That's the thing um, that I I think it is. Uh, so I know uh, 73 was the the European thing, or was it, or is it the other way around? Mm. I'm remembering those back to... No, I think, it, I think it's decimalization is 71... Because I, I, I know some people have been tweeting about Coronation Street from that era, and I think because I think we um, had some of yeah. the coins from '68. You know, yeah. we had the ten p and the five p, the one shilling mm. and the two shilling piece. But I remember mm. the full proper decimalisation being. I mean, I've, I've still got somewhere one of my dad's you know the little sets he bought of the new coins. Uh, but of course, I the thing I, I I struggle with, and I must have used them, is I can't remember ever, as it were, spend a penny. I don't, I don't mean mm, in that way. Yeah. I mean mm. I don't remember spending those big sort of wagon wheel sized pennies to buy things. But I must have done. Mm. But I can't mm. remember it at all. I still remember farthings. I still remember the the uh, the coins with the the ship on the back and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it, it, but yes, I think that was possibly the the key moment of seventy one. But I'm sure when you go through the events of nineteen seventy one. It probably won't even be there, so I'll remember it totally. <laughs> well, I have got some, um, I have got some dates of things that happened, all to do with music, of course. And the first one is very pertinent to your interests in that um, I didn't know it happened this way, but on February the third, nineteen seventy-one, Davy Jones announces he's leaving the Monkees. Wow! I didn't realise it happened like that. I, I hadn't presumed... realised he wasn't still there. No. <laughs> well, well, I. I... I just presume because there was two of them at the end, they just kind of decided not to do it. So does that mean for like half a day, Mickey Dolenz was the monkeys by himself? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, they, um, t- no, they toured for a while, didn't they? I mean, because Pete, Pete Talk and uh, Mickey Dolenz did their thing as the monkeys oh, for quite yeah. a few years. Yeah, I mean, there they? has been lots of other incarnations after 71, but but I think that was the end of of 
of the, the original monkeys, wind up the original in that format, the, what was yes, left of them. Until mm. they reformed later, yes. It's, it's kind of weird, uh, Davy Jones, though. I mean, because with the best one in the world, he didn't really... I don't think I can't remember him having much of an acting career. I mean, uh, I know he wasn't a tall gentleman. I don't know if he had, mm. he had sh- short man syndrome. I do remember most of the time his his, his very distinctively very English voice with that sort of <laughs> twang to it. Not that twang, obviously, but a proper you know mm. the the Davy Jones English sort of almost cod English that he used in the show. And this yeah. it's in the introduction, is it to Daydream Believer, isn't it? Uh, hey, don't get excited, man, just because I'm short, you know. But um, the fact, the thing for that, me about Davy Jones is he didn't seem to go on and have a massive acting career. And all I remember him from the monkeys is shaking either a maracas or a tambourine, or one of those tambourines without a skin, which I can never remember what they're called. But they're just like the circle of bells. I've been listening to the monkeys quite a lot of late, actually. I still want to, um, I still want to see the whole series because I watched an episode mm-hmm. on YouTube the other day and really enjoyed it, and and, uh, and I found it quite. Sort of, it was quite funny, so, as well as being. Hmm. Um, it was smart yeah. stuff. I mean, you know, and, yeah. and, and certainly in terms of what was going on, on on television at the time, I think it's comparable to things like Laughing. I think the you know the the zany, wacky uh, comedy and sm- you know smart one-liners was hmm. was, was it was quite a, a rich vein in in those few years, that sort of late sixties, early seventies. I think before the cynicism came in. It was mm. that that era was actually very sort. There was a lot of really, really rich writing going on, and I think that's that's you know there's some impressive stuff out there, even in mm. what might otherwise be seen as a bit of a throwaway comedy show. But actually, what you tended to find towards the end of the runs of these sorts of shows is nobody ma- cared anymore in that sense. Yeah. So they just did what they liked, and mm. and some brilliant stuff came out of that. Um, it was only a few days after Davy Jones left the Monkees that, uh, on the nineteenth of February, that Queen performed the first their first public concert in you London. You never see them together, do you? Mm. <laughs> no. mm. uh, um, Maybe Davy Jones really was Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, and on the first of March, uh, the lineup for Queen is completed when bassist John Deacon joins the band. Uh, so. What? Because what, what? Just sort of walked out of a geography lesson or something. Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, I did enjoy. I tell you, I did enjoy. Uh, it came up on Netflix and Rocket Man. Really enjoyed Rocket Man. It's a really enjoyable mm. film. Yeah, I saw that at the cinema when I still had my um, um, I'm not, uh, my I'm, pass, no, my, my cinema pass. Yeah. I'm not. I, I I'm not completely convinced. It's you know. I think I think of the two, I actually because it's more about with sort of dealing with therapy and what have you I, I, in many ways I, I found it a much more compelling story anyways, although apparently it's a lot of it's a pack of lies but there we go <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. uh, apparently on the 4th of March the Rolling Stones opened their UK tour in Newcastle upon Tyne but it's intended uh, as a farewell to the UK prior to the band's relocation to France as tax exiles Ooh, was this after the horrible things that happened at Isle of Wight. Uh, yeah, I think, so most, it, I think so it would have been quite weird for them to get back on tour after those mm. sorts of things going on. Mm. Yeah, I think that was more sixty nine mm. that they had lots of horrible. Mm. Well, things I thought going. we talked about it in the previous one. I was just, mm. I was just mm. wondering whether I was suffering from the, the, the nanobots were eating my brain. <laughs> on on the fifth of March, um, the uh, Led Zeppelin performed "Stairway to Heaven" for the first time live. Uh, bow, 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 bow. No stairway. No stairway. Stop it. <laughs> bow, um, bow, 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 bow. On the twelfth of May, Mick Jagger married uh, Bianca Jagger. Well, mm. who she would become, <laughs> of course. Mm. Um, their wedding guests included the rest of the Rolling Stones: Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Eric Clapton, and Stephen Stills. Uh, so, so basically, what we're saying here is that Mick Jagger was a better pal of McCartney than Lennon. <laughs> it did, yes, there's no mention of Lennon being at the at the, at the wedding. So, oh, um, I just, and, you'd, and, you'd think that he had, would have had more in common with with Lennon. Really, you? I mean, just personality wise. Maybe, maybe uh, that was it. Oh, they clashed. Well, uh, John, John Lennon was too busy uh, joining Frank Zappa on stage <laughs> at the same time. So. 
Um, of course, by this stage, he would have been filming things like oh, A Lovely War as well, wouldn't he? He was an actor for a while. And um, June, well, June the 20th to 24th was the date of the first Glastonbury Festival. Well, yeah. um, not guessing, something I've ever fancied, to be fair. No, no, and I'm not horribly far from it. So I think if I had enough friends who wanted to go, mm. I might have been dragged there back in the 90s. But I, I was the kind of person who went to gigs but mm. not with anybody who wanted to do anything like that, and, and I certainly didn't want to do it enough to... Good Lord, to standing in a myself, field, so. living in a tent? No. What sort of no. madness is this? No. Um, guests included David Bowie, Traffic, Fairport mm. Convention, uh, Hawkwind. Um, Interesting. That it was, I suppose oh. it does make sense that it's been 71 because of the things that happened, in the, and it suddenly someone thought, I've got a big field, I could do that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sad news, July the 3rd, Jim Morrison was found dead in Paris, age 27. Um, I, I have visited, actually I've visited his... Was this the, of, the, was this the, thing, the 27 club you were talking yes, about? Yes, that's right, yes, right. yeah. That's I've visited his memorial a few times when I've been in Paris. Um, ah, Pelachez! <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, who's he, who's the person, is he round the corner from somebody It's else? not that far from Oscar Wilde, mm. and it's not that far from e- e- Edith I mm. think. I think I've uh, I know I used. To, that, yes. <laughs> I, know, I know I used to visit like about three different, or because or, I used I went with different friends, so of course I had to sort of repeat um, the, the the sort of things I'd done on earlier visits with different people each time. So I got into a bit of a sort of. This is my tour of, of uh, Paris. I think. It's quite strange. I, the only, the only I think I, the only time I went to Belleches. I mean I have been. Uh, I've been to Paris other times, but mm. uh, we went w- when I was an art student, and actually that was the whole thing that uh, uh, I've always been such an ignorant so and so that everyone dragged me off to Père Lachaise. So, oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's a graveyard, very nice. Yeah, I hadn't a clue, hadn't a clue of the significance. Um, Although we did go and see Jim Morrison's grave, and I'd sort of go, <coughs> "Who's that in?" <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. I'm so sure. Oh. Well, <laughs> we live, we learn. People, you, know, you learn things as you get on. Um, the 14th of August The Who released their fifth studio album Who's Next Um, and it was number one in both the UK and the US Um, and also Pink Floyd in October Pink Floyd released their sixth studio album Metal which is supposed to be a turning point moving away from their psychedelic sound to the more prog rock sound Uh, it got to number three in the UK Um, and on the 6th of November Cher earned her first solo number one hit in the US with Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves. I've given it away now. We've got, well, Gypsies, we got to... Tramps and Thieves. Oh, my sister had that one. That's one of my sister's collection. I do remember yeah. that quite, quite vividly. Just pretend you haven't heard that bit yet because I'll be announcing oh, that it'll, later. It'll, it'll, it'll... Wipe it from your mind. These um, things come back. You know. Hear from the um, people of the town they call us. <laughs> um, uh, Elton John had his first international hit. I with it hit. later. Sorry, go <laughs> Uh, Alton John had his first international hit with your song um, right. that year, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's enough facts. We'll, we'll get on. It's kind of weird because I actually associate. I always think Elton was a bit earlier, but obviously not. Well, he's sort, a big of, Elton fan. he's sort of around playing piano for people um, even before he was sort of. Uh, uh, I'm sure he he did. Well, I suppose it's all around this time, really. Um, particularly when you. I was, Spotted him on top of the pops playing for other people. Mm. But, uh, I was quite surprised uh, actually. I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I played. I've got the double CD set. Well, you know, whatever mm-hmm. box of the very best of Elton John, the one with the blue cover from about mm-hmm. well, it must be fifteen years ago. I probably haven't played it in about twelve years. Uh, but because we'd watched the film, I did actually sort of put the CD on. Mm-hmm. And the thing that surprised me was I have my own copy on vinyl that I bought of uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, uh, because uh, it's one of the albums my sister had and that she lost, and I actually bought that for myself because I enjoyed it so much. And I was convinced I had it on CD, and I haven't. I'd, I'd, I've looked all over the house for it, and I was convinced I'd bought it on. And the only thing I can think of is I must have thought to buy it, and then thought, oh well, no, I've got all the singles I like on it on this other CD. But it did surprise me. So, but I do remember that, and uh, the other album, "Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player." I remember my yeah. sister having those two, and of course, um, see that. I think the other thing is I associate Elton John with earlier because of his association with the Who, because of doing mm. Tommy. You see. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. That was convoluted. You can cut all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I sometimes when they try and do those greatest hits mm. albums and you know like a greatest hits album after you've been around for five years mm. might have a few songs that weren't as big mm. and then then it's 10 years or mm. 15 years and each t- so some songs start dropping out if you've had a long career and and there's always one or two of perhaps the lesser known mm. uh, like for instance with well Kate Bush is a funny one anyway she's only ever done one greatest hits compilation I guess that was I, I guess she's not into greatest hits compilations she's never done one since the the, the mid mid 80s but no. one of my favourite singles of Kate Bush is called Hammer Horror it didn't right. get in the top 40 it just sneaked outside I think mm. and um, so that never that never has had its fair t- sort of revival on a greatest hits album but I um, actually did one of the things I rarely do which is uh, the only time uh, I ever actually bought some music on download was when I bought uh, Kate Bush's greatest hits because mm. there were just two tracks that I really wanted that weren't on it yeah. I, I particularly like heavy people I think heavy people is but anyway there we go yeah, yeah. I'm not um, a huge Kate Bush fan by any stretch um, you know uh, but but nevertheless you know uh, yeah, but I, I'm I'm surprised when I examine my CD collection, which I sometimes have been doing since we've been doing this. I've, I'm I'm surprised at how many original albums I didn't buy. I I did buy compilations, but I didn't. I, a lot of people's you know ordinary album stuff I haven't picked up over the so I which I used to have on vinyl, but then I did. Yeah. Well, I, I I was kind of surprised I hadn't replaced more of the the stuff I had on vinyl with CD and. Um, it, there, uh, there are suddenly these huge gaps, you know, which mm-hmm. surprise me. Right. Well, we're going to move on to the the number ones of 1971. Are quite a a mixed bunch. I wouldn't say it's. Well, I mean, I'm looking looking it's ahead. Not a vintage year. More of a table wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we've only got about twelve number ones. I'm just I'm vaguely oh. looking ahead to the next year. It looks like there's far more than twelve. So it might make last orders then. That's what. The first, the first number one of the year, because we finished last year with Dave Edmonds. I hear you knocking. I don't know if that that escaped. Nine seventy one. I hear you knocking. You're on your way. I don't know quite whether that had one week into seventy one, but uh, the first official number one of nineteen seventy one is um, it's Grandad by Clive Dunn. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm never sure is. Is that the same song as was used on the TV series he did called Granddad? Oh, was that probably. another? Probably. I'm never sure. I would imagine yeah. that it would it would have been difficult to resist using it, and also yeah. Cl- uh, Clive himself would have thought, "Oh, royalties! Thank you very much. Yeah. I'll get a second bite of that cherry." Uh, I don't actually know. I, I don't. I don't know the program very well, so yeah. um, I I do remember watching that. I mean, that was a lot. The TV series was a lot later. The, the TV series was 79 to 84. Mm, which is why um, yeah, you kind of think that... Oh, it, it says the series did not use the song as the theme yeah, tune. Okay. So Because he wrote um, a new one, which wasn't as yeah. thinking he'd have a sequel and an, an extra number one super special song. It's probably the TV version which mentions his character's name and stuff, which... Uh, um, uh, to, granddad, granddad... You're awful. <laughs> it was written for him by Herbie Flowers and Kenneth Pickett. Um, now, I think you need to bear in mind that uh, I was uh, seven years old at some point in 1971. Yes. Uh, because I, I apparently read uh, recently that apparently, I didn't apparently read it, I did read it, but I, mm. the, the apparent theory is that whatever was number one on your seventh birthday is basically how... 2021 is going to turn out. <laughs> oh gosh! Actually, I think I can. I can. I don't know. Uh, I know roughly when your birthday uh, is, well, and we'll see. We'll, we'll yes, see. that's what I'm saying. I, I just thought we'd we'd keep an ear out. <laughs> we'll keep an ear out. Yes. Well, Grandad was number one for three weeks, Ooh, and then we had we a, had a very troubled times. And then, we, and then we had a very well known um, number one, which um, had. Well, there was issues with it in the courts eventually. Um, it is My Sweet Lord by George Harrison. Um, oh. Now, I think because there was. Interesting. I, I feel just... that George Harrison wrote some very good songs, but sometimes mm. that one or two of those weren't necessarily the greatest that he did. Yeah. Kind of, I think he's, um, he's some, the, some of George Harrison's own work is, is, is brilliant, but, but I must yeah, admit yeah. The, the sort of sl- the pseudo religious ones do kind of leave me a bit cold yeah. personally. Yeah. The um, 
you know, back at, back in my days at university. I mean, obviously, long long after George Harrison yeah. was having was was doing these these songs. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a thing for you to say that George Harrison was the best Beatle and to focus on. So he did have a sort of, you know, it, it, it's almost it, you know, fat fandom does sort of. Sometimes it gets bored of the the, the people who are yeah. uh, perceived he's, to be he's the best. Certainly, he, well, he certainly seems to come across as the most philosophical of them, mm. and I quite like that. But uh, I must admit, My Sweet Lord isn't one you can dance to quite easily. <laughs> yeah. It's one that I think I I like like the the tune, and I almost fade out the sort of religious side of it because mm. that side doesn't interest me. But now the the controversy came from. Yeah, and it wasn't at the time. I think it says it was in the later seventies. It was the, the centre of a heavily publicised copyright infringement suit yeah, right. due to its similarity to the Ronnie Mac song "He's So Fine," which had been a, uh, a hit song for the Chiffons. Yeah. Um, I think it was nineteen seventy six. It says, and he was found to have subconsciously plagiarised the song, mm-hmm. a, verdict, a verdict that had repercussions throughout the music industry. See, this is kind of weird, isn't it? Because when you think about it, sometimes a tune pops into your head. You don't know, really. I mean, because mm-hmm. the, there's so much music out there. I mean, what was it that Paul McCartney once said about Eleanor? Was it Eleanor Rigby that it sort of came to him overnight, and he just sat mm-hmm. down? Was it Eleanor Rigby? Was it, or was it me, the other one? The one that's very simple. Like yesterday, wasn't it? Yesterday. yesterday, I think. Yes, it was yeah. yesterday. Yes, you're right. Not Eleanor Rigby at all. Talking through my bottom as usual. No, um, <laughs> no, yes. And but but and he was so convinced that it must be he'd already heard it somewhere because of the, it was so vivid. And I think yeah. I think it's kind of weird sometimes because it must happen. But the other thing is, as we're humans and we can look for patterns, I, you could probably look for any sort of pattern of notes somewhere and go, "Oh, I wrote that fifty-seven years ago." You know. Even at our level, I, I I would always be quite keen to have a title of one of my poetry books say that was I didn't want I, I didn't want somebody else to have that title. Mm. So I'd keep I obviously. I, I was writing in the time when you could check on the internet. Mm. Uh, and when I came up with the title for one of my books, which was Poetiquette, mm. so like the, the etiquette of poet, poems was the... Uh, and I searched and I searched, and I never really found at the time that anyone had really used it in any major way or or, or, um, or maybe at the time maybe not even used it at all, which I just couldn't believe because it just seemed such a pun on, play on words. Mm. But, um, but, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> it is. It is weird. It must be much harder. It's the same with naming. Check things out. Really. Yeah, but the same, naming a band. I mean, if you decide to go on tour and call yourself, you know, whatever, you know, it, mm. you know, you should say you've got a band called whatever, and then you find there's another <laughs> band called whatever that are touring in the states or in, in the depths of Australia or something. You know, it's it's very difficult to actually find that out until it's too late. Really, even with things like naming a podcast, you know, it's it fascinates me. You do as much search as you can. You think, okay, no one's no one's used that, or at least no mm. one is that I can find is using that. And then you've been doing it three weeks and someone goes, oh, I've got one called that. And you go, oh, mm. oh, never mind. I have found other Shy Yetis, but they didn't mm. exist when I started to be a Shy oh, Yeti. So, um, so, so, uh, so unless you, it's like when, when these bands split up and you have two versions of the bases you roll as, sorry, Les, God rest you. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, you've got the, or, or the two versions of Bucks Fizz or whichever. Yeah. And you kind of think, so you've got the the new or the new Bucks Fizz or the original Bucks Fizz or the or whatever, or they just call themselves the Fizz to get away from the Bucks yes. Fizz and all that kind of thing. And it's just a nightmare, really. And for most of us, it's not done with any intention to defraud. It's just, you know, the, you, you thought it was a good name for a thing. The Fizz must be an example of, um, uh, because there is... There is another member of Bucks Fizz that owns Bucks Fizz still, and except there were more of Bucks Fizz in the Fizz, and yeah. I think the the Fizz has has more more, is, fizz more it. better. It's better. It's better known um, these days, and and is being get. I mean, they get produced by Stockham and Waterman or whatever's left of them. Um, so, so yeah, it must two be thirds of weird. stuck it in a water. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's one of those things where your band was made of four people, and if three of them want to be in yeah. in the band the net, then people would rather see the the version with the three people than the one that's actually called what the band used to be called. Uh, next up, we're in March now, and we've got um, the return of Mungo Jerry oh, with oh, a song called Baby Jump. Now, I don't know that one. 
Um, not at least I don't think I know that one. Um, no. I'm going to have to check that one out when, when I do the editing. But, uh, I think Mungo Jerry is more famous for... In the Summertime. In the Summertime. Which yes. I think was number one. That was the, uh, yeah. the previous, uh, last year. So, so ultimately uh, this is kind of the follow-up single, which... But then again, it went to number one, so, you know, it's obviously, yeah. you know... I don't remember it, but... Uh, no, um, it uh, was there for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, then we have... Um, the first number one for a very big act around this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favourites. Uh, we have Hot Love by T-Rex. T-Rex. Um, oh, and they, and they, were num- they were number one for six weeks with this one. Although, of course, they, you know, the, the, this was their first number one, but they'd been around in different forms for uh, quite yes, two or three years by this point. Oh, I do remember. There was a friend of mine whose big sister, elder sister, was... Oh, her bedroom walls were just... What, what I was doing in the bedroom, don't ask, but no. Her <laughs> bedroom walls were just covered in pictures of Mark Bowler. They were just mm. everywhere. She was absolutely worshipped. And I, again, being young, naive, and just sort of going, oh, yes, now we've got to go through my sister's bedroom to go go to this room. Oh, okay. Da, da, da. Ooh, who's that? <laughs> who's that all over the walls? Again, it's, it is kind of weird. I, I do have... I mean, I'm a... I'm a I, oh, Thank you. Um, I, I'm, ter- I'm terrible, really, when it comes to... I mean, I again, I, 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 it took me a long time to take to... I didn't take to Bowie in his lifetime, and I don't think I really took to Bolan in his lifetime. He was one of those people who I sort of discovered long after it was too late to, you know... Um, but Because uh, there's some yeah. great, great uh, T-Rex stuff, but... But I just at the time it passed me by. Really, I, I find the albums harder to get into. Cause I, I have tried. I, I sort of long established going back to the nineties, or if not earlier, that I liked the singles. But mm. and it was also one of my that there were some quite good singles from the sort of seventy six, sort of seventy seven period, which are, mm. are really good. But he wasn't having hits then. My mm. favourite T Rex single is. One called Laser Love, which is right. I think is as good as anything he released, but that got to like number forty one in the charts. But it's what such was a his great song. Um, what was his TV series he did? Was it for Granada uh, the music show? Was that just yeah. Mark? Was it called Mark? Something like I think that's the one. That's the one that yeah. he I think he I remember died watching that very soon after. Know. Yeah. yeah, but I do remember watching yeah. that show. So I mean, it wasn't that I was completely oblivious to him. It's just his mu- his music. Either my sister didn't particularly buy his music, or I just it, you know. I didn't, or they didn't play it on the radio that my mum played in the kitchen while I was having my tea or whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I just they they passed me by and until far too late. He may have had more than one TV show, but the TV show I'm thinking of, he did very like very near, like maybe even in 1977. So, um, so, thing, so it was long, long, long after his sort of hysterical fandom stage. The vivid memory I do have, uh, and again, it, it, it's kind of a bit left field, this, but uh, when I, very, very early days of me joining the Doctor Who Appreciation Society, shortly after he died, um, one, one of their editions of TARDIS magazine had a drawing someone had done. It said, Bolan, born to boogie, you're so full of interstellar soul. And that mm-hmm. picture and that, that phrase has stuck with me ever yeah. since. You know, this is what, 50 odd years now I don't know 40 odd years now but, but it's um, you know it, it so yeah it, it obviously it made an impact you know? nice drawing too by the way can't remember who did it mm. I have I have again I've been to the memorial site because yeah, right. it's I think it's Barnes Common so it's not is that, that the, the tree or, or I mean, yeah, the place where the yeah, but there's are. yeah but there's still like a, a shrine there to this day so it's interesting because I, I, when we were in uh, Monterey, we were near the John Denver. There's a plaque for where John Denver's plane crashed. So it seems to be a thing people do. Yeah. Um, so we're now into early May, mm. and um, our next number one for two weeks is uh, Double Barrel by Dave and Ansel Collins. Right. No, I don't. I, Sounds it's not charming. One that <laughs> So, well, let me see if I can find What's it. It's it all about, Paul? What's it all about? It's a reggae, sing- a reggae single. Um, it, uh, it was the second reggae tune to top the UK charts two years after Desmond Decker's okay. Israelites. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't even know anything. Uh, let me see if I can find out more about. 
One of the great Dave tragedies Nassau. that people say your record collection should have Bob Marley in it, and unfortunately, my, mom, my mother told me this years ago now yeah. that she'd been listening to it on the radio, and someone had said, "Oh, you know, if you've got a record collection, you must have at least one Bob Marley album, and it should be this one." I can't even remember what it was called, but I don't. I, mm. Reggae did pass me by, I, except now, you know, lovely. But again, growing up, we, we didn't, you know, in in sort of one of the sort of Posher suburbs of Stockport. We did. We didn't really. Yeah. Reggae wasn't something that got played very much. Mm. It's not. It no. wasn't a posh suburb. It was posher. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. It wasn't. It wasn't quite. It wasn't quite the dre- It was one step up from the dregs. If you see what's going on. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, our next, our next one of that is. Knock Three Times by on Tony Orlando and Dawn. Me, twice on the pipe. Ding, ding. If the answer is... No, I never heard that one. No. <laughs> um, now... Although I, I that's one I remember my mother singing. <laughs> so it obviously, it, it obviously made it onto Radio 2. <laughs> yes, they also had... They had a number of other hits. I better not name them in case they have more than one hit this year or something. But, I mean, they did a very... Another one that was very famous, mm. which I imagine might be coming up, okay. so I won't. I won't mention them. And this band is, is who again? Band. This is Tony Orlando and Dawn. Tony um, o- Tony Orlando. Wow, that's a name. Do you uh, think that was his real yeah. name? I'm not sure. Um, Pick a name out re- of the American A to Z. Let's <laughs> yeah. get Tony in front of it. He had been recording throughout the 60s as well. And, uh, okay. Possibly um, not as Tony Orlando. I mean, when you think about how many names Elvin, Alvin Stardust had and, and that the one who wore the glittery stuff, how many names they went through before they had their breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. Well, just a minute, let me see. Just need to check something there. Um, oh, no. No, I don't think the other song that I would recognise was number one. Mm. Um, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Was that me? But oh, I guess that I was think them. That was, I feel like that was um, number one forever, unless somebody yeah. else covered it. But um, let me see how high that that got to number. Oh, oh, okay. I I didn't look far ahead enough. No, okay. it, it 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 will be number one, but not not for a year or two. Oh, okay. uh, I it, it sort of fits more. I would have said. It was more seventy one than seventy three, but there we go. No, um, anyway, listeners, forget that I'm forget <laughs> forget that they'll have forgotten. But Mind I'm bleach. Forget, um, actually, I think uh, when if when it was number one, it was the way round. It was Dawn featuring Tony Orlando. So ah, um, there you go. That's, uh, that's, Feet. Uh, yeah. Um, How the mighty fall. So that was that was number one for five weeks. Right. And the next number one was also for five weeks. So into June now. Um, and our next number one is Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep by Middle of the Road. Um, Last night I heard my mama singing a song. Ooh, wee, chirpy. No, I never heard it. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you, you are deep, deep into the in the plastic box that was my sister's 45s, I'm afraid so. And she would have been buying <laughs> Disco 45, the, uh, the weekly lyric thing as well by then. So. Yes. Yeah, they're from Scotland. Um, uh, it's not a very um, Scottish. I mean, chap, no. cheap, cheap. Is that you know? But they they did have a um, sort of a lot of success across Europe and Latin America. Um, it's just they, interesting they also, that the accent doesn't come through. That's the, that's no. the thing that interests me. It's that the people you know seem to not sing in the very rarely sing with the accent of the play. You wouldn't mm. get a clue that they were Scottish band from listening to Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep. In my humble opinion, there may be some Scottish people who go, "No, I that's Renfrewshire, that's that's Lowlands, whatever." Yeah. But to me, it's just no. It's sort of mid Atlantic. You know? I remember watching Tiswas years ago and going back to Bucks Fizz. Bucks mm. Fizz were on. And obviously, again, when you hear them singing, you don't get any accents. Mm. But then, of course, I think Cheryl Baker's very, very Cockney, and and everybody had different. Act- and so, when when they were being interviewed, it was like, oh, they don't. They, in real life, they don't sound like they sound like when they sing. <laughs> and that was. It know, just I'm proves really... when they try. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, now, other hits by Middle of the Road include Sacramento, Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and Soli Soli. And by early 1972, they had sold over five million records. Um, so that's paid for the yacht, hasn't it? Really? It's paid yeah, for the, yeah. the nice little uh, 
seaside pad and a nice house for the mummies and daddies. <laughs> now, now I think it's either this song or the next song, which will be your seven. Um, your, your what, what, what how was, my years going to turn? Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. okay. So the next one was T Rex, mm. and this was this was for four weeks from the twenty fourth of July mm. onwards. So this. This is um, a pretty cool one this, to come into by the sound of it. Go on, what is it? It was get it was get it on. Get it on. <laughs> so, I, I, I genuinely think that that's not how my year's going to turn out. Quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, actually, in, in which I, case, I, I feel there is a flaw in whoever's theory this is now. <laughs> well, well, in in which case, um, starting on the twenty first of August right. for four weeks, we have Diana Ross. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that that's one of those ones that works well to get it on I'm still waiting well to be frank my mother would have been going saying that more than I would at the time yeah I'm not it sure I, I obviously I know get it on but I'm not doing I probably do know I'm still waiting I, um, is it a ballady one I can't it's, it's, it's strange though that the, the titles sometimes really don't resemble the lyric you remember and there are lots of songs where you think they're called one thing and they turn out to be called... I mean, we've, we've come across these over the course of the last... Uh, as we've been doing these, but songs that you go, oh, when you hear the lyric, you go, oh, yes, it's that one. You know I mean? Is I'm still waiting the one that I'm just the fool? I'm not sure if that one... Yeah. If that's I'm still And what waiting. was that one about the feet... Well, the streets beneath my feet begin to crumble? And, oh, that, and that had something yes. like... Mm. It's called something like Song 45 or something. It's just mm. bonkers, you know. But, uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it, it is... It is strange, yeah. That, that um, yeah. T- so T Rex had, the ha- yeah, they have their second number one of this year, um, and uh, yeah, I think seventy one, seventy two are very good for T Rex. Um, mm. But so after Dino Ross, we have the Tams. Hey girl, don't bother me. Hey that girl, was th- don't bother yeah. me. Hey that girl. was uh, three weeks in September the or from mid September. What do we know about the Tams? Um. They're an American vocal group from Atlanta, Georgia. And it's um, just anything had, behind that name? It's just really I'm not an sure. Thing. They had, they had apparently they had more hits in the seven. They had more hits in the sixties, but they continued okay. to chart in the seventies oh. and eighties. Um, doesn't no. Well, oh, just a minute. Uh, oh no, no. That's a child of of. Is called. Tamika. Ooh, that's, that's Tamika's a child. Tamika's the next generation. Yeah. Um, no, I can't see a reason. But I'm sure there, there probably is. Um, but, uh, looking at surnames, looking at first names, no. Nope. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> Toy Wilcox will come and sing us out. No. Um, so after the Tams, we have three more number ones. Okay. And um, one of those is Rod Stewart, Reason to Believe, and Maggie yeah. May. Does he run around? Um, not the yeah. not the biggest fan of Rod Stewart. Weirdly enough, he had a, lo- a lot of fans uh, in a place I once worked of of a certain age, much older than me, mm. oddly. But now I never really talked to Rod. Don't know why. No, I've never really. Um, no, no, it's just something about him. I, ju- I just, uh, I mean, you know, I, very successful. You know, people like things like sailing and what have you. But I don't know. There was just something. I had something about Rod Stewart that didn't really. Never really, you know. And then I'll probably find I'm humming all these tunes for the rest of the afternoon. So there we go. Well, of course, he was in the faces as well. Um, I can't remember if, if this was like the first around the first, you know, Maggie May was kind of the start of his solo career. Uh, but, uh, or whether he was doing both for a while. But. Very rare, I think, for, to, to do the solo and the group. And you know, can carry on both careers, but uh, I'm sure it's happened. Um, that was number one for, mm-hmm. for I, I mean, reason to believe has been covered by lots of people, I think, but I think Maggie May is probably the more famous of the two. I'm sure that got played as an A, well, maybe mm. that is a double A side, so but I, I get I would have thought that Maggie May was. Well, we are getting into the more. era now where I used to listen to the radio. You know, and stuff that, and I, I feel it feels more radio play to me. That one. Now, our penultimate number one, um, 13th of November. Oh, that's four quick, weeks. isn't it? Crikey. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of them have had four or five weeks, you see. So mm. we almost had like one a month, which is, uh, um, so our next 
number one again a, a band that had been around a while before uh, a while at this point um, Slade Cause I Love You Cause I Love You yeah. Yeah. Slade reinventing the English language for, for, <laughs> yes. the, for the wall scroll generation <laughs> yeah because Prince does a lot of that but uh, Slade were doing it before Prince yeah. um, well, it just goes to show that nothing is original even the, some of the more original musicians and, and creatives that we have it's still you still find oh yeah 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 Yes, Leonardo did that in sixteen eight. What? Yeah. <laughs> what did he? Oh, right. <laughs> what? The, um, yes, I've just invented the helicopter <laughs> again. Uh, our last number one, also for four weeks, was, um, well, what can I say? It's Benny Hill with Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West. Right. How to describe that to? You? Uh, well, obviously Americans do know about Benny Hill. That was number one forever. And yeah, Ernie's was, gold, was it ghostly gold tops are rattling in their crate? They won't forget old Ernie. No, I don't remember that one at all. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that that is an area of Benny Hill that would have got over to the states. But uh, um, it just goes to show, though, doesn't it? I mean, when you think about it, that year. I mean, so you've got twelve number ones for the entire year, all of which lasted about a month, which either shows that the people of nineteen seventy one were lacking in a lot of imagination, and two of them were novelty songs. I mean, you start with Grandad, yes. you finish with, yeah. and basically based around um, well, TV personalities, for want of a better word. Mm. That's it is quite an interesting sort of cross section of what the world was like back then. I think you're going to find lots of better tunes than the number two and threes positions. Yes, you? yeah. No, I just want a couple more facts okay. about this particular song. Um, although there's no mention of how well it did in America, probably not at all. <laughs> it did get it did get to number one, and this this fits in with something I've discussed with you potentially doing it. Um, it was also number one in Australia, so yeah, that, yeah, um, that feels but, uh, logical. And uh, this sounds I, I take take this as you will. On Desert Island Discs in May 2006, grit, Gritted Teeth, the Conservative Party leader, later Prime Minister David Cameron, picked it as one of his eight favourite records. Yeah. Yeah, right. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I know. Sorry, it, yeah, no, actually... Yeah. I can't imagine it being anyone's favourite. Well, not, eight for- if you had to pick eight to listen to forevermore... I, well, he did, that's what he deserves to have. It's, it's, it's the, to be honest, I, not wanting to be too cynical, but it, there's, there is the nature of the politician trying to be popularist, isn't it? Uh, Probably the older seven with bloody Elgar. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm not quite sure what he's trying to aim for with oh, that. <laughs> yes, no, sorry. I mustn't swear. Oh, but uh, have, has, has the other one, has the, the foolish, the, oh, no, has the clown boy even, ever done it? Or, or I'm not sure. I don't even, we, we can probably find out if we, but I'm not sure my computer can cope with no, typing it, his name. It, no, it would break. No, let's, let's yeah. not. Let's, let's, let's not. Let's not. Let's look at some of the other songs that were hits in 71. Um, now, let me just check. Cause like, if you start scrolling down this page, you can't see what the columns relate to. Okay, that's the peak number. And that's the week. Because you see, the, the peak the song got to and a number of weeks it was in the charts right. are often around the same sort of number you know or, right. or in single figures so I don't, to, don't want to read the th- the, say the wrong one um, week for my got, peak peak for my week <laughs> we, we've got um, uh, I've never heard of this song Blame It on the Pony Express by Johnny Johnson and the Bandwagon crikey that got to number 7 in 71 you know um, you know now you mention it the title rings a distant and faint bell somewhere somewhere yeah. a few miles away from a church that's probably not quite been open for a few years but i can that, that the title does ring strange bell how odd another favorite of mine um i think it's probably the second single off an album that came out in 1970 it's ape man by the kinks oh okay and i got to number five that's on mm. their album um Lola versus the yeah. merry-go-round, which is one of my favourite. I mean, that's that's sort of a no, an almost a novelty song in itself. But, uh, I think not, not quite I in the same feel way. that they're being more postmodern than that. They're they're yes. actually yes. It's, it's meta. That it's it's a real song pretending to be a novelty song yes. in a era of novelty songs. Where, <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, it's sort of about environment and all sorts of things. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, very shrewd. Uh, shrewd. Very shrewd yeah. customer, old Ray. Yeah. 
Uh, we've also got Amazing Grace by Judy Collins, okay. number five. We've got uh, You Don't Have to Say You Love Me by Elvis Presley, number nine. Not Presumably no. he's covering the Dusty Springfield Yes, that's song. what I was thinking. Yeah. That's probably more for um, me. Uh, Black Skin, Blue Eyed Boys by The Equals, number nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Push Bike Song by Ooh. The Mixtures, number two. I, mem- I do remember... Yes, uh, uh, I do remember that. I, for some reason, I associate that with ice lolly adverts. I don't know why. That, I should I, particularly, that, ride, you know? is it that riding along on a pushback, hmm. honey. That one. Yeah. Um, Although it, I'm, it, I'm now mixing it with a with a, a, a much later Queen video, which I, I need to get uh, out of my mind immediately. Very rude. Uh-huh. Very rude. <laughs> Fat bottom girls, listeners. Um, the uh, it's going to have. A weird combination of songs to sing at the end of this show, but uh, <laughs> the um, pushback song should be amongst them. If not yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Uh, we've got "Stoned Love" by the Supremes, number okay. three. I'm surprised that. I mean, I can't think of. I mean, "Stoned Love." Presumably, that means getting stoned. So, was mm. it not banned by the BBC? I would have thought. Oh, they probably didn't know the term back then. <laughs> probably just thought it had something to do with Bibles and throwing rocks at people I mean they got they got worried enough with sorted sorted for ease and whiz about <laughs> 20 years later or no 25 yeah, years yeah. later yeah, well, like um, I say by, by then that's what they were all doing at Broadcasting House and, yes yeah. <laughs> so um, they knew they were enjoying it so much they knew it had to be banned yes yes uh, we've got No Matter What by Badfinger number 5 Resurrection Shuffle number 3 mm. by Ashton Gardner and Dyke titles uh, I remember but not the tunes, really. It's weird, isn't it? Uh, Badfinger, a band that, that, again, sort of feel you feel you know, but I don't really can't pick them out on a, a lineup probably. There's another. Um, well, this is Dawn featuring Tony Orlando song mm. Candida, who I think I think that's the name of the keyboardist from Pulp. Although I think she's a bit. You sure? I think, have, I think she'd already have been born by now. So I don't. So think it's not she... just a cafe in Orlando called <laughs> the Candida. Yeah, um, that's weird. We've got a Perry Como song at number four. Right. Um, it's impossible. Right. Uh, don't quite know why Perry Como was in the charts. Oh, point, it, but, uh, no. Well, you, the crooners still did it. I mean, every so often, mm. you know, somebody like uh, Bing Crosby would pop up in the charts and have a massive hit, usually to do with some appearance on the telly or in a film or something. But yeah, no, they would. I mean, Perry Como was presumably still doing his Christmas show mm. at that era, mm. I'd have thought. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember. Uh, I still remember Neil Sadaka, Seal Nadaka, no, Seal, uh, Neil Sadaka being sort of quite, you know, popular as a songwriter back in them days. Yeah, apparently it was one of it was one of his biggest hits, or international hits. Mm-hmm. It, it became his first song to reach the top ten in the Billboard charts in more than twelve well, in more than twelve again? years. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, well, it's impossible, but so so mo novias. Um, mm-hmm. so, um, might I'm, be I'm just trying to think of uh, whether there was some world event that you could mm, look I can't see anything in the thing but uh, got Another Day by Paul McCartney that got to number two mm-hmm. um, Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond number eight uh, um, well that's that's still getting played all over the place everywhere yes. now I mean I think they, they, they sing that at the cricket nowadays so that's yes. become a definite staple that's what 50 years on mm. <laughs> uh, we've got my parents have this one uh, Rose Garden by Lynn Anderson, number three. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't promise you a rose garden. <laughs> uh, no, a weed patch. I promised you a weed <laughs> patch, and you got a weed patch. That's how you got stone glove. Uh, <laughs> not that sort uh, of okay. weed patch. Well, I'm not having them coming and digging up my garden, although it would be quite handy. Um, no, uh, I, I'm talking about the old daisies and, yes. da- and um, dandelions. You got- um, the only plant I can grow, and, and there is a theory about. Uh, weeds is they're just pl- they're plants that are growing in the wrong place and I, I feel the dandelion is a pretty enough flower to have its place mm. in the garden mm. and that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it and We've got some some other around, this is, we're still quite early on in 71, we've got Strange Kind of Woman by Deep Purple, number 8 Strange. We've got, I don't think you get away with this today, Bridget the Midget The Queen of the Blues by Ray <laughs> Stevens number 2 um, right. Jack in the Box by I can never pronounce her name. Clodo Rogers, number four. Clodo Rogers, yes. No, it, it, any name, Clodo the Yoda. There no. we go. <laughs> yeah. So you've basically got to take the first name and then find a word that rhymes with yes. it. Yes. 
Um, that's the theory for for a few months. I wonder if that so. was the Eurov- that was the ah oh, yes that was our entry for Eurovision so- the Eurovision Song Contest uh, that year. So. Um, we will. Iron s- Maiden did Charlotte the Harlot, by the way. So mm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't completely rule out the fact that the, it stuck around for a while as an idea for songs. Yeah. Um, we've got Power to the People by John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band, number seven. Ah, um, right on. And then you've got, again, this doesn't sound very Elvis, um, There Goes My Everything. <laughs> it, I can, I, it just sounds like a comedy song. I know it isn't, but uh, There Goes My Broomers, no, number six. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, we're now basically, we're in the last six years of Elvis's life, mm. so I'm assuming he's deep deep into his Vegas era by yes. this stage. Yes. Um, or at least on his way to Vegas. So, uh, uh, you're looking for hits that people will sing along to when they're gambling. <laughs> sing along a gamble. <laughs> uh, we've got Where Do I Begin, Love Story by Andy Williams, number four. Okay. Um, if Not For You by Olivia Newton-John, number seven, which I think is a cover of a George Harrison song from... Um, These are all such safe, middle-class Saturday night performers, aren't they, mm. when you think about it? I mean, you know, not, not obviously not all of them, but... There's a lot, a lot of them still selling a lot of, you know, music at that time. You know, mind you, I suppose o- ONJ was would have been quite new and fresh and young. And yeah, although she was that point. mainly doing covers at this point. But mm. that, well, although I think sometimes it was her version that was the one that was the hit. But, mm. uh, I'm just still coming to terms with the fact that this is all 50 years ago. Yes, uh, we've got Brown Sugar by Rolling Stones, number two. Mm. Um, and and a hit for Ringo Starr, it don't come easy. Number four, because he did, oh, he did have a number of he did have a number of yeah. uh, top no, ten like, hits. Uh, I have a Ringo Starr album. That I, I I do quite like some of his solo work. It don't come easy is one of the better ones. Yeah, I have mm. I have one which is I think it's the one that's got the song Photograph on, and that album uh, has all of the Beatles on. Not necessarily. Mm. I think some tracks have two of them or three of them even, but mm. there's not four of them. But they are all four on there. Um, mm. But uh, um, what else have I got? Um, this is so many. I'm just trying to skirt through the ones we might. Uh, um, there's "Remember Me" by uh, Diana Ross, number seven. Mm. Um, "Heaven Must Have Sent You" by the Elgins, number three. Mm. Uh, they want their marbles back. Yes. My Brother Jake by Free, number four. Uh, I Am I Said, Neil Diamond, number four. Mm-hmm. Um, I Did What I Did for Maria by Tony Christie, number two. Oh, but, oh. Now that, that's, that's a I mean, karaoke special, isn't it, when you've had a few. <laughs> um, <laughs> a bit of Tony, belting out a bit of Tony Christie after you had a skin full. I imagine that happens more than, well, so does the Neil Diamond. Yeah. So, you know. Writing songs that drunk people will <laughs> sing at the end of an evening, that's what you need to do. We've got that's 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 the that's the mark of a true classic. You know? We've also got an Elvis Presley I can't place called Rags to Riches, number nine. Right. Um, I don't recognise that one. We've mm. got Coco by the Sweet, number two. Oh, interesting. Um, Actually, now the Sweet start to turn up. Now mm. I, again, I could probably name you half a dozen Sweet mm. uh, hits, but I don't think Coco would have been one of them. They were number one around the time well, I was sort of, born. You know, a couple of years later, yeah. Well, yeah. Four Room Blitz and Blockbuster are the ones that really sort of yeah. stick out. But mm. uh, you know, and of course, the strange relationship that what wasn't he the brother of Taggart? Uh, yeah, something or something. Like yeah. Mm. Um, we've also got the Never Ending Story of Love by sorry, the Never Ending Song of Love by the New Seekers, number two. That feels like a Coca Cola advert waiting to happen. <laughs> We've got uh, Won't Get Fooled Again by The Who, number nine. Ah, uh, uh, CSI. And, uh, I do love Won't Get Fooled Again. I mean, basically, you could start playing that now and you'd still be playing at the end of the episode. Mm. That's quite astonishing. Now, yeah, now, anyway. now for some reason, um, Heartbreak Hotel and Hound Dog by Elvis Presley were, were released. <sighs> Um, I got to num- they got to number ten uh, in seventy one, but obviously they come from the f- the fifties. So um, mm. yeah, we we will be probably going back to the fifties at some stage. Um, there are weird reasons why some records suddenly get re released, aren't mm. there? Uh, and like I say, I, I imagine it's usually a film. But uh, yeah, what did you ever Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood number two? Right, um, still going, Nancy. Well done. Yeah, and Nathan Jones by 
by the Supremes, number five, although it's the Banana Rama. Did that get covered by Nana no, Nini? Yeah, yes. that's the version yeah. that I remember. Um, You've been gone too long. But, uh, um, uh, For All We Know by Shirley Bassey, number six. I don't know okay. if that is... Oh, no, that's uh, that was written for the song Lovers and Other Strangers. Um, okay. And... The, the the witch the witch queen of New Orleans by Redbone number two. Uh, oh, now that feels like it probably turned up in Blues Brothers two thousand. I, I, I mean, that is it, it, it interests me. Some of the ones that got to number two, and yet yeah. you you don't you just haven't they haven't rem- the near misses. Yeah, they yeah. haven't sort of uh, hung around or been as well remembered. But uh, um, let's try and pick a couple more. There's, there is so many. I've uh, got The Banks of the Ohio by uh, Oliver Newton-John, number six. Uh, Jeepster yeah. by T-Rex, number two. Wow. Um, so that they nearly made... They nearly had a third number yeah, one that year. But, um, yeah, but both huge, oof. huge songs. In fact, in some ways, me- sort of more memorable than some of the other stuff mm. that did. Sort of the last three I've got here are A Theme from Shaft by Isaac Hayes, number four. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Isaac. <laughs> or, or as we know him, The Chef. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no Matter How I Try by Gilbert O'Sullivan, number five. That's a, another name that will have uh, he'll have other hits. Uh, ah, Giblet. And, and, the, yes. the, and, and this is a one that I kind of passed me by as far as I'd forgotten that she had such a big hit um, this late. Something Tells Me Something's Gonna Happen Tonight by Cilla Black, number three. Oh, yes, of course. Something tells me something. Now, that, I think, was the theme song for her uh, a TV, TV show. show. Yeah. Mm. I think. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't 100%, but I feel that that was kind of what she used as the theme to her. Yeah. And therefore, we'll probably have guaranteed a few so. Mm. Uh, before we go over to America, um, I'm just going mm. to tell you some of the... <laughs> just going to tell you some of the albums that were big. Um, now, uh, we've got Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water, for three weeks. Still saying that was, wasn't... Uh, I was I think, thinking that was number one for about like, like four years. I think, yeah, I think it was certainly it was in 70. Um, and this is, this is um, chronologically as well, so... Mm-hmm. That, um, then we have All Things Must Pass by George Harrison for eight weeks. Okay. Home Loving Man by Andy Williams for two weeks. <laughs> um, and then we have a compilation, Motown Chart Busters, Volume 5. They were doing, <laughs> they were, they were doing compilation albums that... Wow, that, that, that that's early, what you know? I call Motown! Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it's, it feels a bit weird hearing it as early as 71. Sorry, that was for three weeks. Um, then we have Sticky Fingers by Rolling Stones for four weeks. Mm-hmm. The one where they had to change the cover. Mm, yes, yeah. Uh, then we have Ram by Paul and Linda McCartney. Um, number that was for two weeks. So those Beatles are still doing all right in the album chart. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rolling Stones came back again with Sticky Fingers for another week. Oh, yeah. ha- ha- having been in the shower. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's still sticky. Then we have Tarkus by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Don't really know any of their albums. ELP. Um, then we have Bridge of Troubled Water again for another five weeks, um, and, and then we have um, it, now we're into August now. Hot hit six um, for just for a week. I mean, I'd, oh, I, I was about to say something, and coming up is exactly what I was going. I was going to say. That there were no top. Was, was it one of those top of the pops? I was going to say. I, I was to going do. to say they obviously didn't chart very high because they're not here. And I looked two two down, and there they are. So yes, they. Um, well, after Hot Hit Six, every good boy deserves favour. Moody Blues for a week, oh. and then we have Top of the Pops Volume Eighteen for th- <laughs> for three weeks. Um, I, 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 I kind of I keep thinking I want to buy one of those from eBay and just see if they're fun or whether they're just. You know why are you bothering when you can probably pay just as much to get the actual original? Oh, I, you know, I, I'm convinced though. I remember they they had a stack of them at my uh, mum and dad's church, you know, for events mm. and stuff. And they were like, they're obviously all done by um, session musicians, mm. but uh, I, they, you know, obviously not the original. Therefore, bar, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, Nevertheless, no. Um, and then we have then we're back again with Bridge Over Troubled Waters for another. Um, uh, no, for sorry, another sorry, just water, yeah. not waters. Mm. I apologise for for one week. Then we have Who's Next by the Who for a week. 
mm. Fireball by Deep Purple uh, for a week. Mm. Uh, Rod Stewart, Every Picture Tells a Story for four weeks. Mm. Um, actually, this reminds me, last year there was uh, somebody on Twitter who I chat to who was recommending albums from 71, and I did download a load of 71 yeah. albums, intending to listen to them. I just haven't mm. found the, the time. I listened to one or two, but I just haven't had the time to... Mm. To, to, to I am surprised though that, that things like the Who only did a week, you know. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah but I mean, considering they are now considered sort of quote classic albums. But then they're probably but, they could have been bub- This only all this says is what they were. They were number one yeah. on that week. They could have been yeah. bubbling bubbling under in the top ten for weeks. Yeah. Well, this is it. I mean, I know that was it. Dark Side of the Moon was in the charts for about mm. five years, but it wasn't number one mm. for five years. It was just it was there there or thereabouts for a very long yeah. you know, top twenty for a very long time. Well, um, after after Rod Stewart, we have John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band with Imagine uh, for two weeks. We have uh, Rod Stewart comes back again for two weeks. Mm. And then we have Top of the Pops Volume 20 for one week. Uh, Led Zeppelin 4 for two weeks. And we finish with Electric Warrior by T-Rex for six weeks. um, I'm not even sure whether... I'm trying to think at this point whether, like... A T Rex album would, uh, whether we've moved on from that sixties era where the single isn't on the album, or whether yeah. by this point um, the single it's, is on the album. It's a very eclectic. I mean, the album mix actually feels more eclectic than the singles chart. Mm. Weirdly, the, from that list you just gave. Looking at the track listing for Electric Warrior, it does have Cheapster and it does have Get It On, but whatever the other number one was that. Um, we mentioned, although that could have been on the previous album. Anyway, not sure. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's the albums. We should head over to America and see what they were up to. Um, Get out of my country. Okay. So, over in America, My Sweet Lord mm. was number one for three weeks by George Harrison. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the Billboard Hot 100. Then we have Not Three Times by Dawn for three weeks. One Bad Apple by The Osmonds. Uh, for five weeks. Bad apple, don't smell the whole bunch good. Don't, I don't. Yep. You know that. You know that one. I don't. I don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um. Hmm. Doesn't say. Although weirdly, I I, I thought it was a Jackson Five song. Unless oh. it was, because it doesn't say that any particular. Doesn't list the position for it over here. Um. Let me yeah. see. I just mixed it up in my he- head. Probably. I, funnily enough, I do remember it because it was used in the um. Uh, it was written of of either or t- one mm, or it two. was written by George Jackson and um, right. apparently the Jackson Five almost recorded it. Uh, oh right, but uh, mm. how old? Uh, so yeah, how how things get mixed up in your mm. head? You know, it's just as I know there were the two cartoon series, you know, Os- Osmonds. And, yeah. was it? I think there was an Osmonds cartoon series. Maybe there wasn't. I know there was a Jackson Five cartoon series, definitely. But um, yeah, how weird? How, how you know you mix it up in your yeah. head? Um, Crazy horses. <laughs> where? Where? <laughs> um, <laughs> after that, we have me and Bobby McGee by Janis Joplin. Now she she passed okay. away the previous year. Um, just my imagination running away with me by the temptations. Uh, mm-hmm. That's for two weeks. Both those last ones are two weeks. Then we have for six weeks, Joy to the World by Three Dog Night. Joy to the world. No, not that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it uh, the the song is also popularly known by its opening lyric. Je- Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Okay, it got to number twenty four in the UK. And then we have Brown Sugar for two weeks by the Rolling Stones. Uh, Want Ads by Honeycone. Uh, now, okay. they were a an American R&B and soul girl group. Uh, right. But, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know if we've... I doubt we'd have had... Would you, Want Ads is a bit of an American expression, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, um, doesn't, read, doesn't mention any UK release. Um we I mean, a retitled it for the UK market. Yes, yes. We called it something like Help Wanted yes, or something. Yes. Then we have It's Too Late, I Feel the Earth Move. Oh, you mentioned that. By Carol King, uh, double A side, for five weeks. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure that must have been a hit of some sort. Uh, yeah, it was number six in the UK. 
Then we have Indian Reservation, the Lament of the Cherokee Reservation Indian by the Raiders. Oh. Um, wow. While, weirdly, that does make me think of something, but I suspect probably not the right It was first recorded in 59, so... I'm quite. Mm, I'm just. I'm just sort of making a connection with Soldier Blue, mm. but uh, I suspect it's got nothing to do with Soldier Blue. Okay. Uh, don't think. But wasn't there? A, wait a minute. Wasn't there a band called Indian Reservation? Or am I mixed? Looks up like somewhere? other people. Oh, no. I think it was a hit in the UK on, by somebody else mm. in '68 mm. uh, by Don Far Farm Farden. Got to number three, Good. so it, it's not totally unknown, but not this version. Um, no, okay. We've got you've got a friend by James Taylor. Uh, that's that's a, a pretty famous song. Got to number four over here. Um, you've got a friend. Uh, well, I wouldn't be able to do half of what I do. <laughs> How can you mend a broken heart by the Bee Gees? I, I, I mm. yeah. That must have been around the time when they were falling out with each other. They was because I, I I know that. There was they did get a bit rocky around the sort of late sixties, early seventies time. Uh wasn't even released in the UK as a single, so probably explains why I don't know that one. Um now this is one of my always been one of my favourite um Paul McCartney song, solo songs, although it's also on the Wings compilation, although I don't think it is technically Wings. Um mm. it's Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey. Um Mm. It's one of those ones that's like two songs whacked together with a, um, but okay. it, uh, it's a, it's a catchy one. It didn't get released as a single in the UK at all, but I I knew it from the sort of first Wings compilation, um, which was probably Wings and early solo stuff. Um, mm. The the very best of yes. Wings. Um, the the three weeks we have "Go Away, Little Girl" by Donny Osmond. Uh, okay. Which, uh, you know, I've, I'm getting kind of disturbed actually. At how many songs that c- come up in conversation have have the words "little girl" mm. in the title? I, it's something. I know. I know it's the way the world, you know, the terminology. But God Almighty, it, it crops up yeah. a lot. You know, I was worrying about it because it, it turns up in um, Alabama mm. song. And I'm thinking, oh, that's a bit suspect, yeah. quite frankly. That's yeah. a bit suspect. But uh, but then you start to realise it's everywhere yeah. as a, as an expression, even in the be- in some Beatles mm. songs. And you just think, you, oh dear me. Nowadays we look at it and sharp intake of breath and all mm. that kind of thing. Mm. Um, after that, for three weeks, we have for five weeks, Maggie May Reason to Believe by Rod Stewart seems mm. to be reversed in order over over in the states. Mm. Um, then for two weeks we have Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves by Cher Here from the people of the town they call us Cher, you, you joined us you could make it right? <laughs> um, <laughs> and every night all the men would come around and lay the money down <laughs> yes we used to like that uh, Yeah, my sister used to play that one a lot was, I was born in the wagon of the travelling yeah. show number four in the UK um, and then we have the theme from Shaft by Isaac Hayes um, uh, for two weeks, John Shaft, <laughs> and then can you dig it? <laughs> and then for three weeks, we have Family Affair by Sly and the Family Stone. Um, well, it's, it's a, a family, it's a family affair. Affair. Yeah. Oh, it's I mean, if you think about it, because I again I'm associating all this with about a couple of years mm. later, but uh, all that sort of soul yeah. funk stuff. But hey, this is a really rich, rich era for soul yeah, and funk. You got to number 15 in the UK, although I imagine they're all on the soundtrack to Shaft. I, w- I wonder if. <laughs> I wonder if it didn't do as well in the UK as because 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 glam was so big in the UK by this point, um, mm. whereas America didn't really have glam or didn't, didn't have glam at all. Uh, well, maybe maybe those films just took up, you know th- th- there was maybe a bit of a time lag with them getting released over here mm. for things for things like Shaft and sort of opening up that kind of idea. You know, I mean, we can, despite what people will have you believe, we can be quite conservative in this country, and, yeah. and things do take a while to permeate the popular zeitgeist the last number one in america was brand new key by melanie which of course um the wurzels would change into uh, a completely different uh, song uh, four you know, five i was thinking later. i know that lyric from somewhere and i was thinking oh it was must have been covered by somebody in the, in the, in the, oh yeah the words. well done yeah, that's to do with i think that's originally it was to do with roller skates um 
I think they have keys, don't they? I was never very good with Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Um, now, very, very, very quickly, uh, albums that did well in America in 71, All Things Must Pass by George Harrison, uh, one, mm. two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. And then Jesus Christ Superstar soundtrack, Pearl mm. by Janis Joplin. I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was released after her. Oh yes, it was released posthumously. Um, then uh, G, uh, that was number one for one. They oh, so just write it down. They just have columns, and I'm trying to read it with my eyes. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, That's nine one. weeks. And then Jesus Christ Superstar again. And then Four Way Street by Crosby, Stills and Nash. Uh, Sticky Fingers for four weeks. Uh, ah, then of course we have Tapestry by Carol King. Now that was I'm not going to read the number of weeks. It's a lot of weeks from mid June till late September. That was number one. Um, then Every Picture Tells a Story by Rod Stewart for four weeks. Imagine by John Lennon for one week. Shaft by Ota Kays for one week. Um, Can you dig it? <laughs> um, uh, Santana 3 by Santana for five weeks. And then there's a riot going on by Sly and the Pan- Family Stone for the last two weeks. Wow. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much 1971 done. Um, but wow. uh, we will be having it coming to sing some of those songs, of course. Uh, and, <laughs> and I know one day, you know, we'll, one day we will let you and Ick uh, duet. But uh, you've still got a lot of training uh, to do. I think you'll admit it yourself. But uh, to you know, to, to equal with Ick's um, professional. Oh well, obviously, obviously. <sighs> yeah. Although this morning, one th- what it stuck in my head this morning. Here we go. There is a tavern in the town, in the town opposite the Rosen Rose Crown, Rosen Crown. <laughs> On Thursdays we go down and load the van with country life butter from the van, grocer man. <laughs> that stuck in my head this morning. Gosh. <laughs> oh, it's English butter through and through, through yeah. and through. Tasty, fresh and creamy too. Creamy That's... too. You'll never put a bare bit of butter on your knife. And so the toast is country life. That sounds like... Amazing what sticks that, in your head. That sounds like a good song to go with any of the fastest milkman in the West. <laughs> uh, now, before we go, I just want to... Uh, Probably the wrong year yeah. for this, but there I, we are. I, I want to uh, just um, uh, tantalise the listeners about some of the names we'll hear in 72, uh, because we've still got about... Drawers I think in. we've got another... I can't remember, I'll have to double-check, but we've definitely got another two years of the 70s before we meet up with what I've already done. We may have three years. I can't remember uh, if I've done 74 yet, but... Incoming! It's, it, we're, we're like Endeavour, we're going to collide with Morse any day. We're going to collide with Nick and I. Um, you meet yourself coming backwards. Yes, That's I, know, the thing. I, I can't explain the way we did it this way, but um, it's just, just being awkward. That's the shy life way. Um, so, names that you're here in 72 include The New Seekers, uh, T Rex, Chicory Tip, Nilsson. Royal Scots, Dragoon Guards, uh, Don McLean, Slade, Donny Osmond, Alice Cooper, Rod Stewart, uh, David Cassidy, Lieutenant Pigeon, which I just think I just heard flying past my window there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Gilbert O'Sullivan, Chuck Berry, Little Jimmy Osmond, and um, one or two of those, I think, may have more than... One or two of these bands does not sound <laughs> like the others. <laughs> no, I think... I'm, sh- I'm, sure, I'm sure I heard the Dragoon I think, Guards yeah, in I the think, middle of it. I think at least... Um, Two of those uh, acts have more than one number one. So, but, uh, anyway, uh, yes, we have that to look forward to. So. Um, well, Martin, thank you very much for uh, joining us again. As ever, an absolute yes, pleasure. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll speak to you again soon. We shall reconvene <laughs> at some future date and look at that. 1972. <laughs> wow. Now, 72, 72 I, I, I always prefer even numbers, so I feel that 72 is going to be a, worth the wait. Oh, let's just hope so. <laughs> okay, well, let's run the theme music when we come back. Ike will be here to sing us out.
Hi listeners. Hi, um, yes. Hi, squeaky, squeaky TV. How are you? Oh dear, you're, you're a bit squeaky. Aren't you? Where, you, uh, listeners, you. <laughs> yes. TV, you're a listener too, aren't you? Um, listeners, you join us early. Um, yes. You join us early one morning, uh, and Ick is uh, about to prepare to sing the songs, the big hits from 1971. And uh, Dealey is so excited that he's got up early as well. Haven't you, Deals? Yeah, it's, very, it's quite a hot morning, uh, but it's probably worth it. Yes. Um, so um, I'm sure he'll be here any minute. Uh, uh, deals. He will. He'll be here any minute. Or oh, Ick. Do you have any favourites yourself, Deals? Of 1971? He promises us that he's been, um, you know, rehearsing. So, I hope so. It is very early. I don't know why it's, well, I suppose it's 8 o'clock, but I've got a day off, so uh, I was expecting more of a lion, but uh, never mind. At least Deals is here. You're so cute, Deals. Um, Hello, everybody. It's me, Kevin. I'm ready to perform. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here, Deals. Yes, he is. Um, there are even people outside. There are people outside, Deals. Waiting. Yes, Carly. <laughs> Exciting. Um, well, I, I guess we'll run the music, and then when you come back, you can perform. I'm very much looking forward to it, Paul. Very much looking forward to it. All right. Come on, Deals. Let's get our seats. <laughs> and, uh, gosh, it's exciting. It is here for the big hits of 1971. Oh, yes. It'll be good, I promise. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com. Oh dear, (laughs) what's going on now? Oh, it's the Shy Life Podcast. Let's go. I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net. Okay, uh, we're back, listeners. And Ick will now sing the songs. Deals is here still, but he, he's unusually quiet, but he's very much, uh, he's very much looking forward to it. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Everybody, it's me, Ick. Um, yes, I am going to sing some hits from 1971. Um, okay. Um, I couldn't work out the tune of Grandax, uh, so I won't be singing that one. But we've got this one. My sweet lord, ooh, hallelujah. My sweet lord, ooh, ha, I really want it. I really wanna be with you. I really wanna see you. I really wanna, yes I do. And I'll make sure I will. Yes I will. My sweet love. <coughs> um, and uh, next up, I have, uh, and I couldn't find out Baby Jump. You didn't try YouTube? No, no, it wasn't working when I was doing my research. Oh, all right. What's all that speaking outside? I hear noises. It's your fans, Ick. Oh, all right. Can't they? Are they at the bar? I think they must be. Shush, at the bar. Be quiet. It's not really working, is it, Paul? No, I wouldn't have thought... I'm surprised so many people are 
harpened making such a lot of noise so early in the morning. Never mind, I will continue. Um, this one coming up is Hot Love by T Rex. Do 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 give you hot love. Do 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 do. You can't say that. Uh, I, I, yeah, it, it was very good. Keep going. Dear you can't say that about T Rex. They're still talking outside. Paul, I'm disgusted. I'm very cross. Well, well, Dealey's being quiet. He's enjoying it. He's loving it. Oh, uh, I suppose. Dear, oh dear. Whose idea was it for us to get up so early? I, th- I thought it was your idea, Ick. Mm-hmm, maybe. I'm very sorry, Ig. I, I really don't know why they're making such a lot of noise outside. I don't even know if the listeners will be able to hear. Um, I didn't know Double Barrel, which is the next one. Never mind. What about, oh, I know this one. Not three times on the ceiling if you want me. Twice on the ceiling and the ceiling if you want me. Not three times on the ceiling if you want me. Now I've got out of tune. I blame it all on those people outside. Paul, this really isn't good enough. Keep going. Dilly is loving it. He does look quite happy. He's staring at you adoringly, Ick. He's like your groupie. Stretching his paws out. He's ecstatic. Oh, gosh. I, I really... I guess I, I... I can't let him down. No, don't let him down. Oh, this one. Last night I had another thing in a song. Chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep. Last night I did it, but I do that of all. Ooh, we chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep, chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep, chirp. <laughs> That's a song called Chirpy, cheep, cheep. Was it chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep, chirp, chirpy, 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 chirp, chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep. Yes, yes, it's a. I believe it is a, uh, you know, a thinly veiled. Reference to political troubles at the time. Um, oh, okay, yeah, possibly. Oh, those people are still talking in the car park. Never mind, never mind, get going. Um, next up we have... Get it on, bang a drum, get it on. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. do, 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 do. Get it on, yeah. Uh, move on. You're, you're, you're mixing your T-Rex songs, I think. Oh, golly, I told you it was a problem. I didn't know I was still waiting by a of us. No, and, and YouTube wasn't working that day. No, sadly not. Oh, OK. Uh, I think I know some of this one. Hey, girl, don't bother me. Hey, girl, don't bother me. Shut up out there. Oh, Paul, I'm, I'm going to pieces. Oh, I'm really sorry. These people are really... It's quite... Uh, listeners, it's quite early. These people are just out there, chatter, chitter-chattering. One of them should be working. Uh, one of them is the ticket guard. He should be inside selling tickets, but he's chatting. And it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it's very noisy, isn't it? People could be woken up, even though it is a work day. I'm just not working. Um, anyway, uh, keep going. Maggie uh, me. Very good, Ick. Dean is very appreciative. Hmm. Um. Oh, no. That's T Rex again. Oh. I think that was supposed to be Slade. Because uh. I love you, yes. 
Uh, Ick, um, that was a song, but you don't have to sing it. Uh, uh, maybe it's best you, you wind up now, early. Yes, I'm going to wind up. I feel wound up. Uh, I, uh, I, am, I am being criticised by the Chitter Chatter. People shouldn't Chitter Chatter when I'm singing. How dare they? I'll, have a, I'll go over there and have a good word with that ticket seller. You should be saying tickets, not chatting. Yeah, yeah I, I know, Ick. Um, but... It, but but Dee has very much enjoyed your performance. Well, I'm glad you... I just feel that I, I could have been so much better. But, uh, yes. Well, well, that's all very well. But I think you did, you did a good job. Yes. Yes, I think I got the words right quite a lot this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, 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 you did. Yes, very... It was... It, despite all of the... Uh, um, the pressure of having Dealey watching you, uh, but I, you know, I think he was supportive. Yes, he's very supportive. He's very supportive. And um, yes, it was those naughty people outside. Yes, it must have been very distracting. You could always, um, you know, you could always re-record it if you prefer. No, no, no. I think uh, listeners will enjoy what we've done. Well, all right then. All right. Well, that's it for now then, listeners. Uh, the the songs of nineteen seventy one. And, uh, yes, um, and, uh, and, uh, hopefully we won't have the noisy people outside next time. Anyway, I'm sure it didn't pick up very much on the, uh, you know, recording, Ick. Yeah, well, I hope not, but, but now we've referred to it, you'll have some dub, um, chatting, uh, in, in the background, so that it makes sense. Uh, I, we'll see what happens when I have to edit the episode. Well, I buy from Amazon. Shyly podcast out of his butt. Four hundred and seven days. Four seven days. Four seven days. Okay, let's just shut this one out. Get it going.